then this protection party. So whatever physical facility I am using, right, I can ensure the use of it for a longer time through protection. Through protection, I can ensure the use of it longer time. I was taking this example of the clothes, right? So if your clothes gets torn, you know, one can get it stitched and it will be a last for years. Okay. Similarly, if you are using uh, a wooden, you know, this thing, then just by putting, you know, uh, wooden chair or table or any such thing, just putting a little bit of paint on this increases the life of the, you know, chair or the table, things like that. So that protection is also something which you can do right? with whatever physical facility you have and it will make all the difference. The third part is in terms of enrichment. So production of necessary physical facility with cycling and you know, enriching process is something which you may need some, you know, kind of place in some place, some land you know, and some other you know, facilities to ensure this. So there you may have, you know, some of you may have this possibility, some of you may not have this possibility. But as far as the recyclization and the you know, protection is concerned, we will all have this <coughs> possibility of ensuring this. And this third one also I said, if you are working in an institution, an organization, right? <coughs> that organization, that institution already having enough space for you to work to ensure the enrichment of the rest of nature. So you have to look into that possibility, right? So majority of the people come from the educational institution. And most of these educational institutions must be having enough space. And if they really decide they can have enough possibility for ensuring the enrichment of the rest of nature. For example, planting trees or doing natural farming or all these kind of things. <coughs> so this is what we need to do at the level of engineering. First is to do with ensuring right understanding and right feeling. Second has to do with living in relationship with human beings, ensuring mutual fulfillment. Third has to do with living in relationship with the rest of nature, ensuring mutual prosperity. So these are the three things we can do. What do you think? You can do this or you cannot do this.
course, you when you start doing this, okay, every time you find that you know you are feeling relieved because a lot of your burden has been removed right? and you are becoming better, you are becoming happier than what you were. So in that sense the journey is very comforting. But then one has to do this. This is a very rigorous thing that you need to do. <coughs> what do you think? This you have to do it yourself or somebody else can do it for you. <coughs> so this this rigorous work has to be done by each one of us ourselves. Otherwise it will not work. So you shouldn't think that because you have attended a workshop, you know, full workshop for eight days, right? Everything will change in you. <laughs> that is not going to happen. Right? The purpose of this workshop is to start this process of self-exploration, number one. Number two, bring forward the proposals, okay, regarding the truth, regarding the reality of human being, you know, human existence, starting from self to entire existence. <coughs> so this will provide you a facility, a possibility of understanding yourself, understanding the whole existence and understanding your role in the existence. But then each one of you have to do it. Work it out through this one, two, three. Okay. You cannot leave it on anybody else. So change in your state of being will depend upon this. The change in your behavior you know, will depend upon the effort you are putting in. And the change in your work, participation in larger or smaller, would also depend upon what you are doing here. So this is something which you have to do is do it very vigorously. And each one of you have to do it yourself. Nobody else can do it for you. And if you don't do this, right, there will be no change in you. So no achievement of attending this workshop. So this is the first important thing that we need to do right, at the level of individual. Then, when you are making efforts at the level of individual and we feel, you know, that yes, this is something which has to go to other human beings also, and it has to go to society at, at large, then what we need to do is this. Three things that we need to do at the level of society <coughs> has to begin with what we call people's education. So it has to do with start with this people's <coughs> education program. Right? What is the meaning of it? It is meant for those who have grown up without having right understanding and right feeling. Particularly for the parents, for the teachers, right? For the people who are you know, taking decision in this society. So this is meant for those who have grown up without having the right understanding and right feeling. 
It is important. It is important because before you start working for the education in Sanskar program, we must need, you know, have the teachers who can conduct this program and the parents who are willing to send their children for this program. So, first, this people's education is necessary. Is it necessary? Not necessary. It is necessary. And this is what we are doing, you know. This eight day workshop is a part of this people's education program. Where we are trying to prepare the parents, the teachers, right? With right understanding, right feeling, right? And commitment for this undivided society and universal human order. People who are willing to ensure right education and start for every human being. Right. So this is the first part of the program. <coughs> So we have invited the teachers, right? the parents and the people who take decision, right? the policy makers to attend this workshop. So this is the fundamental work that is required. Right? When this takes place, then the possibility for education and sanskar program okay, is there. That means providing this right understanding and right feeling to the children who are in the process of education. This is for the people who have grown up right, without getting the right education and sanskar. This is for the children who are in the process of getting education. So if this is there and if there are parents and the teachers and the policy makers who are willing to start with this education and sanskar program, you know, this human education and sanskar, then we can start this second level of program, the level of society, right? And the outcome of this will be people with right understanding and right feeling, people with definite human conduct, right? That is having the competence to participate in universal human order. So this is the first step. Okay. Then this is the second step. So if you look at the you know, look at it in the context of Bhutan, what we are trying to do is trying to prepare ourselves for this purpose. Okay. For taking it to <coughs> education and sanskar, particularly you know with higher education. and make it available for every student who is going through this process of education today. At least provide this as a proposal. If not that every subject is based on this you know, or is designed on the basis of this, at least give them you know, this possibility of understanding right, the human existence a role of human being in this existence. So this is the second step. But the first step, that is people's education, is essential you know, as a preparation for doing this education and sanskar for the children. <coughs> so let's see. The second step, is it essential? to take it to education and sanskar, to reach to every student, every child. Is it essential or is it not essential? <coughs> so it is essential. And the step one is the prerequisite of this step two. So only when we have the 
teachers, the parents and the uh, policy makers, right? Who are, you know, you have gone through this people's education that we can think of introducing it as a part of the education system. So this is second step. Okay. If the second step is fulfilled, that is we have people with right understanding and right feeling, right. people working with definite human conduct, right. people who have the competence to participate in universal human order, right. then the third step, working for undivided society and universal human order. Starting from family order to rest of family to village and finally up to the world family. So these are the three things we need to do, right? So finally working for undivided society, that's living in relationship with human beings <coughs> and living in relationship with nature as a whole, that is universal human order. Starting from family <coughs> order to world family order. Is this a step? So, you can see whether this third step is essential, required, not required. This third step, is it required, is it not required? That is the very purpose. Yeah. So, that is the final purpose that you want to achieve. So all three of them are essential, all three of them are required, right? But we can certainly go step by step. We cannot jump here. We have to start with step one, then move on to the step two and then move on to the step three, right? It is possible to move from step one to step three if okay, we have the people who are in the helm of the affairs, who are the decision makers. If they can see the you know, sense of this and feel the need of it, they can take it to the society directly. And then when they take it to the society, then they will ensure the education and sanskar is a part of this. So you can come from here to here and then go back to this. Because education and sanskar is a part of this ensuring harmony in society. But all these three steps are essential or not essential? They are essential. And if you have to begin, you have to begin with this. Right? In the natural course, you will move from one to two to three. Right? If there are some people who are motivated and want to implement it directly at the level of society, the policy level. Then from one we can come to three and at the part of the three we can ensure two. So these three things are necessary to be done at the level of society. And this is what we have been trying to do. We have been trying to work for. If we look at our, you know, what we have been able to ensure, right, there is a significant amount of work which is done at this level in India and now outside India through these workshops. You know, this workshop we do for a week, okay, because that's the minimum time required to at least put forward the you know, all important proposals. So that through uh, this eight day workshop we have been able to do this. And also it was felt that you know, that many people may not you know, to begin with feel the need of uh, spending eight days uh, in one go. So for them some smaller introductory workshops maybe. 
useful. So we have been conducting some one day, three day workshops or even half day workshop just to give them a feel of what it is. And also we have been participating in number of seminars and workshops and putting forward this as a proposal. So all that is being done in the name of this people's integration program and it has been quite effective. Like today we on, on an average in India more than 100 workshops are offered in a year. And it is certainly kept open to everyone, whoever wants to attend can come and attend the workshop. No qualification is required. Okay. So, <coughs> and it is all you know, made available to everyone okay, without any kind of prerequisite. So, <coughs> that is one thing which we have been able to do. And there is more and more kind of uh, demand from the people you know, who want to conduct this workshop for their colleges, their you know, relatives, their organizations, and so on. In fact, it is we who are falling short of our uh, number of people who can do this, conduct this workshop. <coughs> so there is a fairly good headway here. <coughs> so, you know, uh, we have some small, you know, kind of family based uh, uh, efforts at different uh, parts of the country must be something of the order of 10 you know, uh, places in India. So, where we are doing this, like we have in uh, Kanpur, we have in IIIT Hyderabad, we have in uh, Raipur, in Indore and such places. And it is all voluntarily, it is all done voluntarily by the people on the basis of their you know, commitment which is born out of this understanding. So in that sense there is no formal organization. Right? And it is you know, passed on to others as a gift. Right? As I said, this return of a behavior is mutual happiness. Right? My happiness and happiness of the other person. So the whole thing, you know, the whole effort is based on relationship, based on this you know, Understanding of the fact that it is sharing you know, of the knowledge with the other which is fulfilling for me and for the other. So that's the way the whole uh, thing is communicated. So that is part one. Part two, with this at the background, <coughs> there is possibility now to work on education and sanskar. And when you work on education in Sanskar, there seems to be two major you know, kind of part of it. One is introducing this concept, this, you know, uh, as a course, <coughs> okay, in addition to whatever is being taught. Okay. So that is part one. So whatever is taught in this education today, okay, this is, you know, this proposal is introduced as a course right, to the students okay, <coughs> so that at least they are exposed to this possibility and they start this process of self-exploration, process of self-verification. So this is part one. Part two is that the whole education you know, is redesigned on the basis of this understanding. <coughs> So the major effort you know, till now is on the first part that is trying to introduce it as a course, as a regular course, right? In addition to whatever is being taught okay, in the respective you know, kind of area. <laughs> so what we have done for example in uh, higher education okay, is I was mentioning about this triple IIT Hyderabad. You know, in 2005, it was introduced as a regular course, and we spent around four years you know, intensively working with the very small number, you know, that is 180 students per year. <coughs> so, this intensive effort was made between this 2005 and 2009. 
but the results of it in terms of the behavior of the teachers, in terms of behavior of the students, in terms of the behavior and the, you know, the teachers and the students <coughs> in participating in the process of you know, studies, mm -hmm. in the process of organizing their cultural activities and their you know day-to-day -day life and all, and also the staff was so uh, kind of uh, significant.